Previously on Alyssa's Transition Story. Now on, I will never, 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 ever, 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 never, never. Never, 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 ever, 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 never, never, never let anyone ever find out that I have this secret desire to be a woman. Thank you for joining me on Alyssa Jean's Reviews. My name is Alyssa, and this is part two of my transition story. To transition or not to transition. So this will be getting into uh, the build-up to my decision to transition and what went into it and why it took me so long and that sort of thing. And I will be picking up from 20 years later from where I left off, uh, as the intro suggests. Uh, I left off in part one in 1992 when I was 18, and this will be picking up from when I was 38 in 2012 and kind of building up to my decision to transition in 2020. Now before I dive into it, I just want to take a moment to say that uh, the reason why I do these videos is not because I like to hear myself talk or that I think my story is more important than anyone else's. It's just simply to pay it forward because as I will talk about a little bit later on in this video, um, hearing other people tell their stories on YouTube was essential uh, to me coming around to my decision. Uh, and well, first of all, even like learning about who I was and what I was and um, kind of weighing all of the different information that I was getting and making decisions about what applied to me and what didn't apply to me. Um, so I'm hoping that I can contribute to that for someone else, um, that I can be one of many voices um, that you could consider if you are struggling with the same things that I struggled with, or you're not sure if you want to transition, or you're not sure if you are trans, or that sort of thing. Um, again, I would be one of many voices. Uh, mine is not, my story is not more important than anyone else's, but um, when I was making the decision, I was considering a lot of different voices, and it was very, very helpful. Um, so I'm just trying to pay it forward and be one of those voices. I think it would be especially helpful for those uh, over 40 or even over 30 because you've lived more of your life um, presenting yourself as a gender you don't identify with. And the longer you do it, the harder it is. Um, and hopefully the younger folks can get something out of this too. But I'm thinking particularly, I don't want to say old folks, but people in the 30s, 40s or older because when I was watching the videos, I do have to admit that most of them were younger people in their 20s. Um, I feel like this uh, age group is underrepresented on YouTube, underrepresented on YouTube. So I thought I could be uh, a voice for um, us middle-aged people <laughs> who have lived like a longer part of our life um, as the gender we don't identify with. Um, but hopefully, if you're younger, don't turn this off. <laughs> hopefully, you could get something out of it, too. If not, uh, if nothing else, like, just an interesting story, hopefully. Anyways, now that all that's out of the way, let me pick up in 2012, 20 years later, from my previous video. Um, the reason why I jumped to 2012 is because that was a turning point. That was um, when I started to... Uh, realized that this thing was never going away and I need to start learning how I was going to accept it. And by this thing, I mean my, my transness, my trans identity. Um, so in 2012, um, I don't know if you noticed in the pictures, I was in Yosemite. I went on a Yosemite trip with my family. My parents came out to the West Coast. One of my brothers already lives out here and then 
my other brother, Mark, who some of you may know if you are familiar with uh, my previous channel and you're familiar with Mark's channel, An Enchantment of Eternity. He was living in New Zealand at the time, and they all came out. We went to Yosemite, and um, this story is not going to be like, oh, I went to Yosemite, and uh, there was I saw a structure there that reminded me of a giant vagina. <laughs> it was something, it was something like that. This, this, there's actually no direct connection between... Uh, Yos me going to Yosemite and what happened after that which was me um, the floodgates just really opening up to me just wanting to constantly dress in women's clothing and um, think about being female all the time the reason why only reason why I bring up Yosemite is because that is a, a landmark in time in my head so that I can remember when this happened um, I just remember that it happened around the time of after we got back from Yosemite, which would have been July 2012. Um, but there's no actually direct connection <laughs> between me going to Yosemite and then I mean, there's none, no connection that I can see. What I think happened was uh, the dam finally just broke. The waters were just building up too much and the dam couldn't hold them back anymore. And it just that's when I said floodgates, but the, yeah, the dam just burst open <laughs> um, because I, I was trying too hard to suppress it for so long and I had been suppressing it for so long that it finally just couldn't hold anymore. Um, and so that happened um, in 2012. So I went a good 20 years of really... <laughs> um, uh, doing my best to suppress my uh, my true identity, my my true self. And by this time, I had been married for a year. Uh, I had been with her for two years, um, but we were married about a year and a half or so. And um, I had told her that I had this need to dress in women's clothing that I couldn't explain. Um, it's just a thing that I like to do sometimes. Uh, on the side, but um, I didn't come out as trans because I didn't know that I was trans, so I could only tell her what I knew, and she was just like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Um, she had no, like, interest in sharing in that with me in any way, um, or, um, and she made it very clear that she, you know, wanted to be with a man, um, so... Then I decided, okay, well, I'm going to have to be a man, but I'll maybe if I just do uh, this uh, thing that I feel like I need to do, like wear women's clothing, I can, you know, uh, get it out of my system or whatever. So then I can just be a man the rest of the time. Um, so that was my thought process then because, you know, I loved her and I wanted to do what it took to, to be with her and I didn't want to um, do anything to disrupt that at the time. So... Um, I, I think I told her around that post Yosemite trip time that I was doing it a lot and she was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, I would do it when she was at work or whatever, or she wasn't there. Um, and you know, she was like, yeah, knock yourself out <laughs> with my clothes, whatever. You know, I also got my, a little bit of my own, but cause it felt weird always wearing someone else's. Um, but I was very, very separated from my marriage. And um, this was on and off for a few years. Um, it wasn't always as intense as it was. Uh, I will say the gender dysphoria was at an all-time high <laughs> in, this, in this time period. But it kind of... Um, I got back to, you know, suppressing it a little bit um, over the next five years or so. So it was very up and down, back and forth. Eventually, uh, 2017, um, we got a divorce, and um, I wish I could say that the primary reason was because of of this, but honestly, I I don't think that I gave this as much credence as I probably should have. <laughs> I, uh, later on, I would come to be thankful that I that we separated. Um, because of that, because I, we, I wouldn't have been able to move forward with transitioning, I don't think, uh, staying with her. So when we got divorced in 2017, um, that is when I, like, I really dove headfirst into YouTube. I, just, I had started doing it a little bit, um, looking up videos of trans women and um, 
some of them are just pictures, you know, before, I love the before and after pictures and just seeing um, what a person looked like before they transitioned and what they looked like after. I just always thought those were beautiful. But then I started getting into um, the stories like this one, or a lot of them were people giving HRT updates. Those are extremely informative. Um, a lot of them are people talking about their surgeries. Just, you, you've seen them, I'm sure. <laughs> like all the different videos that all over YouTube. Um, and I like really, but in the years between 2017 when I got the divorce and 2020 when I eventually did transition, like I was watching those all the time. <laughs> all the time, multiple, multiple videos. And, um, and as I alluded to earlier, um, it really was just kind of thinking about um, what in that, like picking out what applies to me and what doesn't. Like, um, there were some trans women who were in situations where nothing like mine. Um, there might have still been a tidbit here and there that I could relate to, but... Um, and then there were others, even younger ones, um, that I, I did feel uh, a lot of you know common feeling when they would describe their feelings um, growing up, or their feelings um, when they made their decision to transition, um, I could relate to a lot of it. Um, so at a certain point, I did come to accept that I am trans, but I didn't necessarily think that I was going to transition. Okay, so a quick review, the stages I went through, complete denial, wanting to just get rid of this, exercise as demons, lasted about 20 years, and then it kind of, uh, okay, I accept that this is a thing that I have to deal with, but maybe I could just um, get it out of my system uh, every once in a while and just still continue being a man for most of the time, uh, to now the next phase of, you know, I'm not a man, um, but what am I going to do about it with this knowledge? <laughs> Um, because at this point, um, I had been, uh, I really conditioned myself for my entire life, which, you know, I'm in my forties at this point of, um, just being absolutely terrified of anyone ever finding out. And so it was, I had never vocalized it to anyone. It was something that was deeply, deeply internal, deeply buried inside of me. Uh, so the idea of somehow bringing this to the surface seemed overwhelming and it seemed impossible um so then in come the excuses okay i'm over 40 oh, it's too late <laughs> um like if i had had youtube when i was in my teens or 20s and maybe i would have gotten the information sooner and i would have had time to come out but now it's too late i may as well just go ahead and finish out this life being a man and maybe i'll get reincarnated as a woman either cis or trans i'll be reincarnated as a trans woman who can transition earlier <laughs> in life i really thought this like I, it was just excuses that i was making um because of fear and fear is the big factor here um, and i think um that was a commonality that i saw in other people's stories and if you were in, were in my position, you probably also experience it. And uh, yeah, fear <laughs> was the biggest thing. So I was making excuses. And then um, a couple of years before I transitioned, a friend of mine who I wasn't super close with, but it's somebody that I knew through other friends, um, came out as trans. And she was roughly my age, I think possibly even a year older. I'm not sure. Around in the same ballpark of my age and I was like okay well there goes that excuse because she's doing pretty well <laughs> um, and then I just found myself being jealous because she had the courage to do something that I just felt that I would never have um, so now at this point um, without excuses any without that that big excuse anymore I just knew it was my fear and I acknowledge that I said, well, I'm never going to get over this. Um, and a lot of this had to do with fear of change and fear of how other people would react around me about this monumental change in me. Um, that's why I do think um, when you do it older, later in life, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, um, I met someone who transitioned at age 63. When you do it later in life... Um, it is harder because you've lived so long 
um, pretending to be something you're not, and you're so just used to it. It just becomes second nature to you. Um, it's just what you do. <laughs> um, and that isn't to minimize the difficulties of transitioning when you are younger, because transitioning in today's society the way that it is, it's always difficult no matter how old you are. But I think it's a different, it's on a different level when you've lived 30, 40 years uh, a certain way, because change is hard. <laughs> and the longer you do something, uh, the harder it is to change, even if it's something that is destructive to you. It's the same reason why um, people stay in destructive relationships, um, even though they're destructive, is because it's it's what they're used to, it's what they're comfortable with, and that, that's the same thing that was happening with me. Um, so changing something is very, very, very hard. Um, and then 2020 came along. So in early 2020, I did something that I never ever thought I would do, um, and it's in my transition timeline as well. And I shave off my beard because for all of this time I had this big fuzzy beard. The fuzzier, the better. Um, it was like a security blanket um, to make sure no one ever ever had any inkling of any idea that I could be uh, anything other than male. So. Um, that a lot of you know a lot of trans uh, women who are hiding it, who are uh, in the closet, do something to overcompensate. Some of them act really masculine. I didn't really act masculine. The beard was my thing um, to kind of hide it and make me feel better that no one would ever 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 find out. Um, so shaving it off uh, was actually a big deal <laughs> uh, to me. It was like my security blanket was gone. And the reason why I did it is because I promised myself something. So I had this weird thing that I, I noticed a pattern that uh, the first long-term relationship that I had with the girl that I didn't quite get married to, but we were together for a while. We met in January of 2000. Um, the next long, really long-term relationship I had um, with the person that I married, we met in January 2010. <laughs> so I was like, okay, January 2020. If I don't meet like the next big person, then that's my signal. I have to promise myself that I'm going to shave my beard and I'm going to experiment with um, being female like in my fullest form. Because before when I dressed up, I would have to wear a face covering, which I did before it was cool, <laughs> before 2020. Um, to really see what I look like um, and see if that's something that I really want to do. Like So, it's, so I really got to explore this in the first step of shaving the beard. So I did that, did it for a little bit, it was great. I got scared as shit, I was terrified, um, and uh, quickly grew the beard back. I was like, no, 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 I can't do this, I can't do this. Um, so this was in January, and then by like March, my beard was already growing back again. Um, so I loved it, but I was terrified, is, is the short of that. Um, so then I started growing the beard back. Then March, you you all know what happened in March, right? I don't know. I don't know what happened in March. Nothing really. Just COVID-19. COVID and, you know, you guys went through it. The lockdowns. Um, the whole world changed. Um, uh, for me personally, I was thankful to still have a job. So I wasn't one who lost their job. But I was working from home all the time which honestly was hard. Like you didn't get to socialize, didn't get to be out. Um, and you know, it, I think the lockdowns wore down a lot of us. Um, and especially since we didn't know how long they would be. Like, so yeah, it wore me down like everybody else. Um, and then in, you know, it was it May, the George Floyd happened. Um, do you guys remember feeling that there's a sense of the apocalypse is happening? Like, um, then there were all the protests, and um, I live in a city that is famous for our evil Antifa protests or whatever. I've been to a couple of those. They're not evil Antifa protests. They're peaceful people, 99% of us, um, protesting that uh, black people were killed by police, murdered in cold blood. Um, that's all. <laughs> um, so 
that is all happening and this is all creating a heightened sense of anxiety in me like my anxiety is like way up here and then I had the weirdest birthday of all time like my birthday is on June the 1st and that was the day June 1st 2020 is like the day that Trump did that weird thing where he gassed a bunch of innocent protesters in DC and then just so he could go and do a stupid photo op where he awkwardly holds up a bible or something that is probably the first time in his life he's ever even touched a bible so that all the christians can go oh look our leader trump is holding up a bible awkwardly and he gassed a bunch of innocent protesters i heard stories of people singing and playing guitars and that um, made me so sad because the one huge, huge major protest I ever went to was for the Iraq War protest in 2003 in New York City, and there was a lot of people dancing and singing and playing guitars, and that was a um, happy memory for me. So this, this like, triggered me. <laughs> I was, I was uh, over the edge, um, which... I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to in 2020. And I didn't even lose anyone. I'm thankful I didn't lose my job. I didn't lose anyone close to me to COVID. I know there's other people who had it way worse than me. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think all of us had some sense of anxiety. So with this anxiety really taking over, um, I don't know when it happened, but there was a moment where I was just like, what in the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, um why it, this this fear that i had just seemed so little the fear of transitioning just seemed like so meaningless now um we don't know what's going to happen uh, we don't know what's going to happen that november like i didn't know the trump wasn't going to win um like this the world could be ending <laughs> like this is all going to shit and do i really want to live my whole life um not ever having been who I know I really truly am deep inside just because of this fear this stupid fear <laughs> like so this so the fear became small um now for anyone else experiencing something similar you're not hopefully not going to have another situation like that come up where you're just kind of forced to overcome your fear so I don't have great advice <laughs> on how to overcome your fear but I We'll just say that you need to figure out a way because once um, I got through it, um, once I got to the other side of the the tunnel, um, it was amazing. Um, I felt like a huge, huge burden had been lifted from my shoulders and I had no idea how heavy the burden was until it was gone and I was just free and liberated and um, more content than I've ever been in my life. Once I got through it to the other side, um, which is later in 2020, um, so it was worth it. But um, getting over that fear was the biggest thing that I needed to do. And in part two right there, I'll pick up in part three with coming out and uh, then talk about just like what it was like uh, this past year uh, to live as a trans woman, especially to transition during COVID because it's a very interesting time to transition. So that will be part three. Um, if you are watching this when it's first published in August of 2021, part three will come out August 20th, 2021. And if you are watching this in the future, then it's all up there right now. So please check it out. Check out everything else on my channel. I do nerdy stuff like Star Trek, Star Wars, MCU, and that sort of thing. Subscribe, 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 and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,